I feel that it's time for us to revisit a topic and a video that I have previously released. And that is a video on why you should avoid HDMI for color critical workflow, especially for pro displays. There's a lot of discussion I wanna have about that. So let's have a conversation together. I'm Art and Art is right. Before we start, subscribe if you're new and hit on the bell icon so you'll be notified every time I upload cool new videos like this. So apparently I hit on a controversial topic talking about HDMI and color management in the same video. I rewatched that video again and all the points that I have included in the original one are going to be here as well. However, I feel that some of the points were not emphasized enough in the first video that causes some confusion. So we're going to emphasize a lot of those points here in this one. First off, this is what an HDMI cable looks like and this is the connector that you're seeing on the screen right now, the close up of it. This way you can identify the HDMI type connection. The comments I have received from this video though are wide ranging from I don't know what I'm talking about to this is the only connector, what do I do? Let's address all of those. So starting out, what is HDMI really there for? It's designed to connect peripherals to your TV set and it's designed to be an all-in-one type of cable. That means you only need to hook up one cable. The thing is that with all these cables, there is only a finite amount of bandwidth on there. That means it's very limited. So in those limited bandwidth, these companies now have to figure out a way to carry sound, to carry HDR signal and pictures. So they're figuring out ways to literally make everything work on a singular cable. So what they have done is rather than outputting the video signal RGB at zero to 255, like anybody would do full range, they have do that in a limited range. So they have limited that down to 16 to 235. When that happens, you're really throwing away all of the white tonal gradations and all of the dark black tonal gradations away. This doesn't really make that much of a difference on a TV set per se or from a entertainment device, but from a color critical workflow device, this has a tendency to make a difference, which is the reason why we're running into some of the issues. Now, the other thing I want to say in my other video too, is that I use the term avoid and I should have been clearer by not using term avoid because I never said don't use that cable period. You can still use it provided that you run testing on it. And I want to be extremely clear that HDMI works. And if that's the only port that you have, you should test that first. But before we even talk about that a little bit further, let's talk about the type of displays quickly. So there are two types of displays out there, software calibration and hardware calibrated one. Let's talk about software calibrated display first. In general, if you have those type of displays, which is pretty much, for instance, most of BenQ display range, including their PD Pro Designer line, if you use an HDMI output with those displays, you're not going to run into an issue, even if you try to calibrate it. The reason why is because when you use a software calibrated display, you generally would have to use a calibrator and you would use the calibrator OEM software to run the calibration. For instance, X-Rite i1 Profiler would do the whole calibration and would validate the profile using the x right Color Checker Classic or any other profile validation charts that you may want to use. But very seldomly do software calibrated displays do a measurement or a validation using all the gray tones, very similar to a hardware calibrated one. This is the reason why that you're going to pass on the software calibrated display, whereas if you use a hardware calibrated display, such as the BenQ SW line or any other hardware calibrated display out there, your validation may not pass. So if you only have an HDMI output on your computer, and if you have a hardware calibrated display, I would encourage you to run a calibration first and do a testing. And the reason why the truncated signal fails on these hardware calibrated displays, for instance, on BenQ Palette Master Element with the SW display is that if you run a validation on BenQ SW displays, you will see that most of the time, all the validation is done using the white to black tones in those different ranges. The thing is that if the signal gets truncated, the computer doesn't know or the program doesn't know what values are being output there. So it's throwing a high delta E value out there to you. Obviously with all these high delta E values combined together is giving you a high delta E average, which causes the validation failure. If this is the situation, if you're getting a validation failure, it just really means that your computer or your HDMI output is not doing a full range output. At that point, you will look into using an alternative cable or an alternative connection instead of using the HDMI one. 
Another thing I want to note about this is that if you have an HDMI output and you're asking the question, for instance, can I adapt that HDMI to DisplayPort or that HDMI to another type of connector, you're still going to run into an issue because the signal originated from your computer is still an HDMI output with that truncated signal. So you're still going to run into the issue. So the best thing that you can do is look for another type of connection instead. Most of the recent computers from Apple, I haven't found this to be an issue at all. And in fact, most of them do not even ship with an HDMI native output anymore beside the Mac mini and the Mac Pro, both of which output full range HDMI signal, including, by the way, I've just tested the Apple Silicon M1 processor, and that also output full range HDMI signal as well. So that won't have any problem at all running native and trying to do a hardware calibration. There are a few Apple computers that I've found in the past that have issues with truncated HDMI signal output. Those would be the 13 inch MacBook Pros. And generally they're the one that are built between 2010 and 2015. Those are the one that has the HDMI output built into it. And it's only the 13 inch one. The 15 inch one will work just fine. However, if you have those ones, just note that you also have a port that you can use this play port instead of the HDMI output as well. If you have a PC, I find that some AMD cards are causing an issue where the signal output range on the HDMI are limited. Generally, there is a way to go into the AMD driver and change that. However, that's going to vary from machine to machine and from GPU to GPU. So I hope I was able to offer you some more clarification and emphasize a few more things of why you may not want to use HDMI in your Pro workflow. This is primarily going to focus on HDMI with the limited output range running on a hardware calibrated display. If you have any questions about this, leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe if you're new, hit on the bell to be notified every time I upload cool new contents like this. And until next time, in art we trust.